Typically, when someone talks about a photo album, it's a book with a bunch of blank pages that you can add a picture or pictures to a page. So later on, you can flip through those pages and reminisce about all the fun times you've had. Here, I'm going to show you the electronic version of PowerPoint's photo album feature. So to get started, just open up PowerPoint. It doesn't matter if you're currently working on a project. As you can see here, I just started. I know, I just got one slide, but it doesn't matter. Just come up here and click on the Insert tab and go down to Images, the group that is, and there's Photo Album. You can see when I hover over it, in the pop-up, it says create a beautiful presentation for your favorite photo collection. Well, that's just beautiful. You can either click on that or click on the drop-down arrow and click on New. It's the same thing. But no, when you click on the drop-down arrow, after you create your photo album, you can edit the photo album. So let me go ahead and click off and click on Photo Album. Now when I click on it, it's going to ask me, okay, where's all your pictures? Is it on a disc, DVD, CD, or is it on your computer? So to get started, let's go get those pictures. Click on File slash Disc. And if it's on a disc, over in the navigation pane, go ahead and scroll down to find your DVD drive. Well, mine's a Blu-ray. And you can see when I hover over it, the pop-up, well, that's Access 2016. Well, that ain't working for me. So I'll just find some pictures on my computer. Let's go to the Pictures folder. Okay, oh, we got some samples. Double-click, that'll work. And so if you want to go ahead and insert just one, Go ahead and select it and then click on the insert. But if you've got more pictures within, well, this folder that I want to bring in, you can either do a block selection, like if I want to select from Chrysanthemum all the way to the penguins, select the first one, then hold down the shift key and click on the last one and it selects everything in between. You can do it that way or if you want to get more particular in a non-block selection, non-linear, click off and select one, hold down the control key, and click on those that you would like to bring in. If I over selected, then I can hold down the control key again and deselect one of them. And there you go. So now I have a total of one, two, three, four, five selected. We're good. Let's go ahead and click on insert. And there we go. Total of five pictures. And the first picture in my photo album is going to be chrysanthemum right there. Now, if I don't want a picture like penguins, Let's go ahead and check that. And you can check additional ones, but when you click on remove, all those that are checked, okay, don't want to get rid of the lighthouse, so let me uncheck that. Go back to our penguins here, and you can see a preview. And let's remove it. So now we're down to four. Okay, great. Now, what about the lighthouse? What about it? Well, I want it to be the first picture in my photo album. Let's go ahead and check it, and come down below, and click up. Now it's number two, up again, now it's number one. So the first picture, great. And with the preview down below there, you can flip it on its side if you want to do some flipping. And you get other options like contrast between two colors. You can make it more contrasting by clicking up, 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 or less contrasting by going down, 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 darker. Speaking of darkness, you got the sun that you can make the pixels brighter or darker. Now, let's go ahead and create our photo album. Now, when I do that, you see I've got my original presentation I'm working on. It's going to leave that alone. When I click on Create, it's going to open up a new window or a new file with these pictures in it. So let's go ahead and click on Create. Opens up a second button with its corresponding window. A new file called Presentation 1 as opposed to, well, what I was working on previously. So it leaves it alone. That's good. Let's go ahead and click on the button to restore this window here. And that means I need to save it because, I mean, what the heck is presentation one? So let's come up here and click on save. Forces a save as. And this is going to be Kurt's photo album. And then go ahead and click save. And there we go. Up in the title bar, it updates it. So now that I have it saved, let's see what we got. Okay, the first slide is the title slide. And it's got the title photo album. And, ooh, how did it know it was me? Well, that's spooky. Well, as you recall in an earlier training video, when you go backstage, there's the user information that you can type in your name, and that pulls it in here from there. Come up here, click on the File tab, go down to Properties, and this is a quick review. General selected by default. Come down to the Personalize Your Copy of Microsoft Office, not PowerPoint, but all the Office applications. Whatever you type in here for your username, 
will be, well, you'll be the author, and it will update, and in this case, over on the title slide as the author. So if you want to get credit, make sure you got your name here, and not some other generic name or the name of your computer. I'm going to click Cancel, and oh, that's nice. So there's slide one. This is about my photo album by Kurt Kershaw, or a photo album. You can go ahead and change it and say it's Kurt's photo album. Okay, that's more accurate. Oh, it doesn't like my name. Well, that's horrifying. Let's right-click on it and go down to add it to the dictionary. Okay, better. Click off. Congratulations. We just learned how to go ahead and take something that's misspelled with the red squiggly underneath it and say, don't see it as something that's misspelled. Add that to my dictionary. In any case, there's my title slide. Now it's up to date. And there's slide two with the picture. You can see over in the thumbnails here, slide three, four, and five. Okay, well, let's go ahead and update this, make some changes by coming up here, clicking on the Insert tab, and going to the Images group. Now, we don't want to create a new photo album, so you want to click on the drop-down arrow and go ahead and click on Edit. So that way you can go ahead and select any additional ones and remove them if you want to remove them, or click on File to add more, or do all the other changes we talked about here. Next, down below, you can change the layout of the album right now is going to fit the picture to one slide. So if the picture is smaller, it's going to stretch it so it fits the entire slide. Now that can be kind of grainy and blurry, especially if the pictures are pretty small. So what you can do is change that and say, don't fit the slide. Just give me still one picture per slide, but just keep it at its original size. So you can do that, or click on the drop down arrow. You can do two pictures per slide, four, or you can do two pictures with the title. Let's just go ahead and keep it simple and do two pictures. Now when I select that, notice up here we've got one, two, three, four. One picture for each slide. When I go to two, it updates it. So we've got on one slide, two pictures. The second slide, two pictures. And then over to the right here, you get a sample preview of what the layout's going to look like, including the shape. And the shapes are pointed at the edges because, well, that's what pictures typically look like. You can come over here to the frame shape and say instead of being rectangular, let's do rounded rectangle. Select that and you can see that the pointy ends are rounded now. And then before I go ahead and click update, how about the theme? Now right now the theme, the background color for the slides is black. I can go ahead and see what's available by clicking on the browse button. And hey, looky there, those different themes. The background will be that color and that one's green and this one's white. I'll go with that, and if you can't see these, it might be up here on the command bar in list view. So, well, click on the drop down arrow and go to large, and there's, oh, integral, that pattern. That's too busy for me. So let me go ahead and select office and click on select. And then now when I click on update, remember, two pictures per slide, and then we're going to have rounded pictures. The edges will be rounded. And then we'll have a white background, at least as part of the theme. And as you recall, a theme is a combination of colors, fonts, and effects. So one of the big changes will be the background. Click on Update. And there we go. No black background. So when we go to slide two, hey, there we go. Two pictures per slide, and they're rounded. Great. Let's see what else is available. Let's come up here and go back to Photo Album to Edit. And we get the option to add captions because I don't know about you, but a picture, even though it's worth a thousand words, just adding a few more words could really explain it. So you can go ahead and check captions below all pictures. So all your pictures will have a little area here below it for you to type in explaining about the picture. Now, if you can do it in a few words, that's what's good about a caption. But if you want, well, something more than just a simple synopsis, a caption below each picture, then go ahead and add a text box next to each picture. So we've got two pictures per slide. When I select the lighthouse and I click on new text box, it bumps the second picture onto slide number two because it's going to be, well, the picture on the left-hand side, lighthouse, and on the right-hand side, a text box. So right now, I'm going to have a caption below the lighthouse, and then to the right of that, I'm going to have a text box. So the caption could be, well, something simple and short, and if somebody wants to learn more about what they're looking at, then you can explain it in full detail over on the right-hand side. In fact, let's go ahead and add a text box to slide 2 for the chrysanthemum. And then we'll leave slide 3, just two pictures there. So let's go ahead and click on Update. Okay. 
So here's the first slide, the second slide. Hey, there we go. There's the caption right below it. And here's the text box. So the lighthouse, click in here, and you can say, well, it's a lighthouse, and then type in something like a little bit more detail of the meaning behind it, something that's quick and to the point. Okay, where it got bit by a nasty snake. Oh, that ought to grab your attention, and then you can go into full detail about how you, I swelled up like a balloon and just popped from being allergic to snake venom and whatever else you want to add. So, you know, go ahead and delete the text in there and say something like, it was a It was a beautiful fall day when we visited the lighthouse and I about stepped on a snake and was about to, f okay, f flee when it bit me in any case. You know, don't forget you can change the size of the font here. So if the text is too big, make the changes we talked about, how to format your text. And there you go. A little synopsis, you're interested, go ahead and read more. And then slide two, same thing, chrysanthemum, give us a little bit of synopsis, then more detail. And then on the fourth one, just keep it simple. We could just say, look, this is the desert where I got stung by a scorpion and the tulips where I got stung by a bee. Uh, I don't know, I'm just having bad luck by going outside. In any case... Some of your pictures may need further explanations, some may not, and for those that may not, then, well, go ahead and type in a date and say this was taken in 1972 when we went on a honeymoon. Once you're done with that, be sure to save your work, and when you open your PowerPoint presentation, your photo album, again, to make any changes as far as the photo album goes, click on the drop-down arrow and click on Edit. doesn't mean you can't go ahead and click Cancel, and just make the changes here by resizing it and moving around and then going to another one, copying and pasting that onto another slide and pasting it here. Sure, you can do that, but you're kind of getting away from the structured photo album. But hey, it may be a start for you. Nonetheless, you can still make whatever changes you want, as you would normally in editing your presentation. Having a photo album does not restrict that. And I guess we can go ahead and play our slideshow. If I come down below on the status bar and click on Slideshow, so it plays from my current slide when I click on that. So if I hit the Escape key, and I want to play from the very first one, select it, then come down below. And I'll show you all the different tips, tricks when it comes to viewing your Slideshow in a later training video. But let's begin from the first one here. Hey, Kurt's Photo Album. Click to go through each page as you would in your typical photo album book and be able to go through that. And this way you can go ahead and have it on the computer, send it to somebody, or if you've got a projector, hook it up to it and project it up on your wall there. And then just have a nice evening with your family and friends reminiscing about all the fun adventures you were on. And then when you're done, just click to end the slideshow. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.